Hi guys, I'm regularly asked what it's like to become a coach and I'm regularly being approached by people who are aspiring coaches asking for advice about how to choose coach training, what qualifications to do and any other tips uh, how to become a successful coach. So in this video I would like to share with you my top tips that I would have given myself back in 2013 when I was leaving medicine and considering to train as a career coach. Back in 2013, I was very naive, assuming that as long as I complete a credible coaching qualification, people will flock to me for coaching. In reality, it was a very different picture. In fact, I would say that maybe 25-30% of my time as a full-time career coach in 20. 2014 to 2017, I was coaching. The rest of the time, nearly 70, if not more, percent uh, of the time was taken up by marketing, business uh, development, so lead generation, acquiring clients, as well as admin. That was quite a revelation for me and something that took a while to understand. I wish it was something that somebody told me before I considered going into career coaching with the hope that I could make a full-time living out of it. It is possible, absolutely, and even without qualifications. I will give you an example of that, but generally it's more business generation than coaching itself that you will be doing as a full-time career coach. To help you with this, in the end of this video, I will share a couple of really amazing resources that were pivotal for me to acquire paying clients. First of all, I would encourage you to think why you want to become a coach. Is it because you have experienced some transformation with a coach and now you want to help others uh, make similar transformations? If not, if you haven't been coached before and you want to become a coach, why not? Why wouldn't you try to be coached first to understand what it's like and how uh, significant these uh, transformations can be so that you can then help others to experience this? So this would be my number one uh, tip, experience coaching for yourself. Secondly, understand who you want to serve because this will help you to, to create your strategy and to decide whether you even need a, a qualification. This is actually controversial whether or not you need qualifications for coaching. There are people out there who are coaches and earn five or even six figures for full-time coaching with amazing transformational results for their clients. One of them is John P. Morgan, and I speak very warmly of him. In the past, our paths uh, crossed, and I'm really grateful for his guidance that I received that really inspired my journey as a coach. Now, John didn't train as a coach yet. He has a very successful full-time practice, which you can look up. I will leave a link to his website. Uh, so it's so he's a living proof that it is possible to be really successful and uh, also do well financially even without the prior investment in the coach training however generally you would probably be looking to acquire some qualification even just for your uh, own personal development so in this situation i would uh, encourage you to ask why uh, and who would i like to be uh, coaching who would i like to be serving if it's um, mainly to enhance your um, social skills and your people uh, people skills and day-to-day -day social interactions for which coaching can be really helpful, then I would uh, probably suggest that you do a short foundation course, maybe just a few days, uh, possibly a few weeks long, uh, which will give you an opportunity to understand the theory and to have some initial practice before you go ahead and do that uh, in real life. That should be enough for, for this purpose. Now, if you're thinking of doing coaching as a monetizable activity, whether you do it alongside your main job or as a part-time coach, or even as a full-time coach, especially as a full-time coach, then you would probably be looking uh, to acquire a credible uh, qualification. What will also be very important is whether you want to be coaching for uh, corporates versus uh, directly uh, coaching individuals. Generally, it is more financially secure to be coaching within big organizations, perhaps bringing your own team of coaches, but it's harder to get in. Uh, usually it's by word of mouth, uh, 
and uh, you would need to have a really good network and know people to get into corporate coaching. I may be wrong, so please comment uh, in the comments box, box below if you had different experiences, but that's my experience uh, and the experience that I've heard from other coaches. It is much easier to get started with uh, paid clients if you're coaching individuals. Even before your coach training, I would suggest that you have an idea who you would like to be helping. You don't need to have a clear 100% business plan before you start your coach training because some thoughts will come up for you during coach training. You may be inspired to serve a particular audience that you may not even be aware of at the moment. But even beforehand, uh, have a think, who are the people I gravitate towards helping? Are these people aware that they have a problem that I would like to be solving through coaching? Number two, are these people actively looking for solutions to this problem? Number three, can these people afford for this problem to be solved through coaching? And number four, will they want for this problem to be solved through coaching? So these are four really important questions to ask yourself when you're thinking about a potential target audience that uh, you will have. Many people think, well, uh, I don't know now, I don't really need to know. In fact, I, can, I, I want to help everybody. I will just become a life coach and uh, I will see who will come to me and with whom my message will resonate. This is probably not a very wise approach because your message needs to be targeted at a particular audience, especially in the beginning when you're just starting out your journey. You need to be producing relevant content that will resonate with your target audience. And for this, uh, the general school of thought is to be quite niched. With time, you can change your niche or you can maybe expand, uh, broaden out your uh, interests and uh, help more people. But generally, just to get started, really narrow down the type of um, audience with a specific type of problem. Having said that, I want to warn you against choosing coach training uh, providers that only focus on a niche tool or a specific specialty, for example, DISC coach uh, training or ADHD coach training or healthcare coach training, because you will be limiting yourself to just those tools or specialties. And should you wish to choose to um, do another type of coaching in the future, you may have uh, some limitations in terms of your skill set or uh, credentials. What you have heard already is more than I knew back in 2013 when I was choosing a coach training provider. So I'll tell you what I did back then and now actually it makes me laugh, but hopefully you will be able to learn from my mistakes. So. I was still practicing medicine, but I had a clear goal to leave medicine within six months. And I started thinking, what else can I do? Coaching at the time wasn't really on my radar. I then met a lawyer leaving law and moving into coaching. So when she said to me that she was going to be training as a coach, I thought that she was going to be a sports coach. But she explained that she wants to be helping people to transform in different uh, aspects of life. And that's what coaching is about. So I thought, well, she's already done research. I will just go uh, with what she chose. So I didn't bother choosing a coach training provider, even though it's a massive investment for some coach training providers, including the one that I went for, uh, it's several thousand for a few months uh, worth of training. So you need to be much more diligent than I was. And here are the things that you should pay attention to when selecting a coach training provider. So the first point I covered just a couple of minutes ago when I said that it's best to go for a broad training program rather than a specific uh, coach training for a particular specialty or for a particular tool, which will ensure that you have a range of uh, coaching skills and a very good basis in terms of theoretical understanding of uh, uh, coaching and uh, its effects uh, on clients, and then you will be versatile uh, as a coaching professional uh, in the future. The thing to consider uh, as well is whether or not a given coach training provider has a path to ICF accreditation. 
This is important because it means that the coach training has been approved according to the globally set uh, standards uh, within this the coaching profession and this is what ICF is there to do. It's unlikely that you will find a coach training that will give you uh, an ICF accreditation right away because it takes time, it takes many months, if not years, to get the first accreditation. But an accredited coach training provider will have already certain foundation, for example, the number of coaching hours, the number of mentoring and group work hours, to contribute towards getting that uh, ICF accreditation uh, eventually. The two direct paths to ICF accreditation to watch out for when you are evaluating a coach training provider are the words ACTP or ACSTH. ICF accreditation in terms of your coach qualification would be particularly important if you choose to then go into the corporate world and to corporate uh, executive coaching because they do want to see solid credentials. In my experience working with individuals, this is less so. And I have to say that in seven years that I've been a coach, I have never been questioned about my coach qualifications. Of course, when I introduce myself, I explain what qualifications I have, uh, what credibility I have, share the testimonials. But generally, what individuals, and I guess corporations as well, would want to know is, can you help me? Just because you have done a very expensive coach training course or even a master's degree is unlikely to ensure that you will be able to charge high prices for coaching. The main thing will be to build credibility, to build testimonials and uh, make sure that you are referred uh, by word of mouth and that will take time as well. So a qualification per se is not your passport uh, to a thriving coaching practice. So talking about coaching for corporates, my tip number three is to research how companies choose their uh, coaches for corporate or executive coaching. You may wish to tap into your network and see who works at what company and if those companies are the sort of companies where you would eventually would like to be doing executive coaching, you can then ask your connections uh, to tell you more about their coaching programs within their organization, or maybe even refer you to somebody who, who is the decision maker for that organization in terms of how they choose coaches. This will give you valuable insights in terms of what qualifications are expected for that kind of organization and what you should pay attention to. Number four, does the training delivery match your learning style? Here we need to consider whether most of the training will be delivered online or face-to-face. -face. At the time of recording this, we, are, uh, we have a pandemic, so it's very unlikely that you will have any face-to-face -face interactions, but for the future, anybody who is watching this after the pandemic, it is an important uh, thing to consider. Sometimes there are blended approaches for delivery of uh, trainings, so uh, some of it will be online, uh, some of it will be by phone uh, or Zoom meetings, and some of it will be face-to-face. -face. So it depends what your preference is and what your learning style is, and this is something that you need to evaluate when you're looking uh, at comparable uh, coaching programs. The other thing to consider here is how much individual work will be expected versus group work and whether mentoring is included in the fee of the coach training. Sometimes the overall fee may not seem that much compared to others, but there may be some hidden costs. For example, the mentoring, uh, which is actually very important if you are on the path to that ICF accreditation, you will need to have had a certain number of mentoring hours as well as uh, real client coaching hours to be able to satisfy the criteria to get, start getting those qualifications beyond your initial coach training. So sometimes there are hidden costs where the clients that you are to coach and the mentors who are supposed to be mentoring you will need to be paid for on top of the coach training program. So it's very important when you're choosing the course and you're speaking with the administrator for the course to ensure that these things are addressed and you you are making an informed decision. Another thing to consider is whether the 
teaching delivery is in intensive blocks or whether the program is spread out over several months with uh, weekly or bi-weekly uh, interactions uh, with the tutors and the students. Number five, what is the coach training program philosophy and is it in line with your own values? This is very important because there are so many different coach training providers, many of which are ICF accredited. So I guess when the price is comparable, when the delivery method is comparable, how you could actually make your decision is whether the philosophy and the values of the program are in line with your own. So I personally trained with IPEC, the Institute of Professional Excellence in Coaching, which is supposed to be one of the best programs in the world. And the philosophy of the uh, course was closely following this book by Bruce Schneider, who is the founder of IPEC Institute. So the idea that they follow from this book and uh, the whole coach training program sits on this foundation is that we all have different levels of energy from one to seven and we on a day-to-day -day basis we circulate between different uh, levels and if we gain the skills and the awareness how to manage different levels of energy that can have a very uh, significant uh, and positive impact on all areas of our life. The key skill is how to manage that energy productively and not get stuck in lower levels of vibration, so level one or level two, when you are apprehensive or when you feel really deflated and have no motivation. So the philosophy is teaching coaches or aspiring coaches how to help clients manage their energy and really pull themselves up and be the better versions of themselves in all areas of life. So this is a broad foundational coach training based on a, a really interesting idea which resonated well with me. So the, the tagline is transforming your workplace and your life from the core. And they really followed through with this. I will leave a link in the description if you wanted to purchase this book. So point number six when you are selecting a coach training provider is whether the trainers are the real experts. A way to assess this is to find out what qualifications they have, what testimonials they may have had from their previous clients, uh, and even ask the administrator of the course to put you in touch with one of the trainers who is likely to be teaching you on this course. If you ask for a 10 minute quick call, I can't see why they shouldn't give you this opportunity because after all, if you are a coach, uh, usually you would have a chemistry session with a potential client to see if you can work together well. Why shouldn't it be uh, when you are the customer and you are about to make a massive investment, possibly several thousand pounds or dollars or euros, so so they should be open to this request. If they're not, I would probably question why not. <laughs> and at the very least, uh, ask them to give you the contact details of a couple of former students who you could have a conversation about their experiences of the course and how much value the course gave them as uh, future coaches. If you are evaluating the credentials of uh, your future uh, trainers, if they have a PCC or MCC after their name, it means that they would have uh, undergone rigorous training as a coach and they are likely to be uh, good trainers. Number seven, do you feel like you are being sold to or things are being overpromised? The way to assess this when you are having your interactions with the salesperson for a particular course or an administrator is to see how willing they are uh, to put things in writing and also to see whether they make any promises such as giving you a PCC qualification within three months. This is unattainable because ICF has a specific requirement for people to follow a certain track uh, of achievements uh, over a certain period of time. So it's physically impossible to gain a PCC coach accreditation within three months. It's just an example. Watch out for things like that and generally research online the reputation of the coach training program. In this day and age, uh, people leave reviews everywhere and on forums you're likely to come across people's reviews and opinions about different experiences of uh, different programs. But again, they may well be just opinions, so just use your own uh, common sense uh, and see whether 
you have a gut feeling that this is the right program for you. The last thing that I wanted to cover in this video is whether coach training should have additional skills taught to you how to market your business, how to set up a coaching practice. When I trained with IPEC, we had a little bit of that, but this was many years ago. I'm not sure how much of that they have uh, at the moment. I know there are coach uh, training providers out there who will promise you to equip you with the business skills alongside the coaching skills. I, I would probably take it with a pinch of salt because the main focus for you should be to get really good coaching foundation and perhaps the business skills will come later. You can uh, research it uh, separately or invest in a different course if possible. So if uh, a coach training provider promises you those additional skills, maybe view it as a bonus, but if they don't, it's probably not a bad thing. So don't get too hung up about this. As I promised uh, in the beginning of this video, I would like to share with you two really amazing resources that really helped me to gain clients. Number one is this book called The Prosperous Coach by Rich Litvin and Steve Chandler. I will leave a link to this book in the description box below. What this book is about is essentially what any aspiring coach or even a qualified coach needs to know to gain clients. It's tough. It's really hard to gain paid clients. I cannot recommend this book enough. The book is divided into very short chapters. It's, it's a real page turner. So very quick, short chapters. The book shares with you a no-nonsense approach to sales conversations and really helps you to feel the value that you provide to others. And if people don't think that that value is what you're charging, then you basically say goodbye and move on. And the book really teaches you to have the growth mindset, this abundance mindset rather than the scarcity mindset that most coaches, especially in the early coaching careers, uh, have. I would strongly recommend this book both for aspiring coaches as well as the more established coaches. It will really help you to grow your coaching practice regardless of how many months or years of experience as a coach you have had. The second thing that really helped me was Catherine Watkins training Selling from the Heart. She doesn't even know I'm mentioning uh, this to you, so this is not an affiliate recommendation. A few years ago, I did her basic training, which in itself was so powerful that uh, it was enough for me to start generating uh, clients. So I would highly recommend Catherine's trainings and I will leave a link to her website uh, in the comments uh, box below. If you have found this video helpful, please let me know, please share your thoughts and experiences about planning to become a coach or maybe you are already a coach and you're just looking for ways to develop your coaching practice. I would be really interested to hear from you. As always, I would like to encourage you to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss other videos like this coming out. Thank you again for listening guys and until the next video, goodbye.